Okay, everybody. This is Bones. I'm back in the Alternative Energies Lab. We had some questions come in on the uh, dual core bubbler. Uh, you also see that I made a change to it about an hour ago. Um, apparently, I wasn't very specific on how it works, which is probably like me bouncing around from one idea to another. Unfortunately, it doesn't come apart. Once it's together, it's together. But um, let's see if I can go over it really quickly. It's the bottom the bottom section. We have a one inch tube inside. If you've watched the prior videos, you'll see how it was constructed. So I'm not I don't want to waste any time going over how it was constructed. But what the theory is behind it of how it works, okay, is the inlet tube is on the bottom. It goes up through the one inch tube that's on the inside. And the one inch tube will also be filled with water. As it bubbles through that, it'll come out through the top of those two T's that I have on there and then come back down the fish tank tubing that I have down there, which drops almost to the bottom of this tank again. And now the bat outside of that, inside of this tank, outside of the one inch tube, it's also got water in it. It's not a whole lot of water, but it's enough to cause that air gap that we need. I don't want to put too much water and add too much pressure in there. But what I was thinking is I added this this tube here to it. You'll see how it comes off the bottom and I have it running up the side and it comes out right next to the outlet port of the tube. The reason I did that is remember my bench top one it always used to leak out every time because we only have a two inch riser in here so that that tubes always going to be underwater and if I've known that sooner if I paid attention sooner I probably could have done away with this sight glass here because I used polybutylene on the outside, which is going to tell me how much water is in it when the system is down, when it's when it's not running. Because when it's going to run, it's going to push that water out of this tube back into the center tube, out the fish tank hoses, and equalize the level of the inside and the outside in the in the two tanks that are inside here. So while it's running, this tube should be empty. And then when you shut it down, it, everything will equalize itself out and come back up to a no, normal water level. One of the questions are, what are all the little holes I had drilled in the bottom of the one inch tube? Well, those little holes were to equalize the pressure between the outside tank and the inside tank. That's what those little holes are for. That's why I drilled them at an angle versus drilling them straight in. So this way, as the air, the HHO enters the bottom of this cell here, it'll go straight up through the inside the first core instead of coming out the bottom because the air that's why we put a two inch extension to it it's going to be a lot easier for that bubble to go upward and out than it is going to be to turn itself around and come back down into the bottom so really quick that's how it works air goes in through the bottom or the hho goes in through the bottom goes through the inside core bubbles through the inside core the gases come out the top of the core through the two T's, back down through the fish tube, back through water again. Once it finally escapes there, that's when it comes out our exit port. So that's the whole deal in a nutshell, how it works. I hope that answers your questions on uh, what my thought process was behind it. So far, it worked. I, I've tried it out. It worked well. That's why I knew I had to add this extra tube on the outside of it is when I tried it, I just brought it off the bottom, and obviously as soon as I filled with water, it came right back out again. Um, but it does work. It works pretty well. Now, again, this will only work on high output cells. If your cell is not performing at least a high 4, a low 5, you're not going to have the pressure to push your, your gases through this, um, which is... Okay, because most of us are producing really well, very high output cells anymore. It's also going to uh, build up a little bit more pressure inside your cell than it used to. 
So um, that will find any of your weak links. So if you have any leaks anywhere on your cell, you'll find them with this style bubbler. Hey everybody. Hey, I want to add something. Uh, on, on this, I, was, I, was, I just got done talking about how uh, we uh, have to push more pressure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a device that measures inches of water column. It's basically a, a measurement on pressure. We're, we're, we're actually not pushing pounds of pressure. It doesn't take pounds of pressure to push this thing through. So we have to uh, measure it in inches of water column. So I'm going to I'm going to build a really simple YouTube tomorrow i know it sounds kind of funny that's what we're on but that's what the, that's what the tool is called i'm going to build a very simple one tomorrow that'll give us inches of water column and let us know how much pressure it actually took to uh to clean this thing or to push this thing and get the uh hho to actually exit the, the uh, canister this might help you out a little bit and uh i think i'm going to make a video on how to make that youtube or uh it it, it would come in pretty uh pretty handy with the test things that we do not only will it help us in uh knowing the pressure that it takes to push our bubblers and stuff it'll uh let us kind of know determine what we were doing and you know uh you'll notice i use i use three eighths inch barbs on all of my uh all, i had to go up to three eighths barbs because i was i was building up too much pressure inside my cells so i went up to a three eighths inch barb i'll uh i'll record how i build it and give you an idea it's really simple all you need is a couple pieces of tubing and a tape measure and a flat board to mount everything to um i'll make a little tabletop one here for everybody to see um one other thing i want to touch base with uh before i go i'm going to use this as a q a type of video is um we had questions on our plates on our uh our plate sizes um the uh the plates that we have they were they were asking the sizes on what they were okay the standard plate our neutral plates are two inches wide by six inches tall it's an 18 gauge steel stainless steel 304 it's a 304 stainless steel the the electrodes are the same size plate but they have a three quarter inch by three inch arm on it so that brings them up to a total of a nine inches high from top to bottom, two inches wide, three inches, or I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch wide here to here, three inches tall from the top of the cell to the top of your connection. So that's six by two by three quarter by nine. So hopefully that'll answer any questions. Again, they are 18 gauge. 304 stainless steel the electro plate the electrodes are laser cut and the regular plates are stamped it's just a stamp uh, stainless steel no sharp edges they're uh, very well very well uh, made uh, any questions uh, leave us an email um, like I said they will be up for sale anybody that would like to order them uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate you watching our videos. Uh, be safe. And we will see you on the next video.